welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. So, yeah, please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. This is going to be a relaxation session uh, and a sleep session depending on what you want from it so if it's a sleep session you're looking for then I would suggest lay down on a bed and listen and just let yourself drift off if it's a relaxation part that you're interested in then I would suggest you set your alarm for whatever time you want because there's a good chance you'll fall asleep even if you don't want to um, not that I'm forcing you to fall asleep it's just you'll feel relaxed and you may just get bored your mind will drift and that's kind of it's not really a big difference between relaxing and sleeping you know, the only difference is if you relax, relaxing, excuse me, you relax and you stay awake. If you relax and fall asleep, then that's falling asleep. I know it sounds obvious, but there's a very fine line between feeling really relaxed and drifting off. And those that are in need of some sleep will find it probably harder to stay awake during a relaxation session. And my suggestion is if you are just listening for relaxation, maybe sit in a chair, one that supports your body. So if you did fall asleep, you didn't fall out of your chair. But sitting upright, but with your body supported so and also your back supported don't have to have your neck supported but um, the more comfortable you are the more likely you'll fall asleep so I don't normally give such a long introduction but it's, it's worth knowing it's worth thinking about it because there's not really a lot of difference between a relaxation session and a sleep session except the sleep session may mention the word sleep quite a lot which I will do more in the second part of the recording the first part will be relaxing and then there's the option to drift to sleep if you choose to want to allow yourself to let go completely and the more you listen to me the easier you find yourself able to relax completely and let go and a lot a lot of that reason is because you just get used to it it's it's, it's really no different to um if you hear the theme tune to your uh, a television program that you like and you perhaps feel quite good, you know, um, if I hear the Mork and Mindy theme tune from the Mork and Mindy show, I feel good inside. I feel a little bit sad inside as well, but, uh, you know, I feel quite up, uplifted because that was uh, a very important TV show in my childhood. It was, I was like eight years old, I think. And it was by far probably the funniest, the best TV show on TV to me at the time. And I used to look forward to watching it. And then I grew up with Robin Williams and saw everything else that he did as, as he got older. Uh, and watched his stand-up. But, or a smell, you got a smell maybe of something. Um, I like the smell of petrol 
which might sound a bit weird, but I don't mean sniffing it, but just sometimes the uh, the smell of like exhaust fumes. Um, not too close, obviously, because it's unhealthy. But it kind of, oh. And it reminds me back in the old days when there was a lot of exhaust fumes around. We, you know, we weren't... Uh, no societies were particularly on the ball when it came to air pollution. I mean, they did, they picked it up quite a bit in London for a while, in the 60s, I think, or 50s. Um, but, you know, there used to be a lot of uh, smells of cars. And, that, you know, I even, weirdly enough, like the smell of a butcher's. And it's got nothing to do with meat or anything like that. It's just something, and I couldn't understand it. And I thought, well, especially as I've been a vegetarian for various different parts of my life, as a Buddhist, I kind of went to vegetarian lifestyle. And, like, why do I like the smell of a butcher's shop? And then it clicked a few years ago that the reason, probably is because my grandmother's brother was a butcher and I used to visit him. It was in town, you know, stuck like, and we used to visit, we used to go and play upstairs in in the flat above the butcher shop and he was the loveliest man you could meet. Big, strong mind you everyone's big and strong when you're a little kid, don't they? But you know, he was big, strong man and he was lovely, always really, really friendly. And going in there with the smell of the, the the shop, probably, and having him being so nice, I kind of felt good when I went in there. So there's, you know, there's those connections. Uh, so, which you could say technically has got nothing to do with the recording that I'm doing now, but I like to try and explain where I'm coming from when I say something. And instead of just uh, just saying stuff for the sake of it, would I do that as well? So I've actually, normally I don't actually, actually prepare for recording you know I kind of just wing it in a way maybe I've got an idea but today I almost rehearsed this in my bed this morning or it might have been last night and I don't know why but I just had this idea and then I just started to go through it and to see how relaxing it would be for me uh, because I do I when I'm making a recording like this it would be the same as if you was in front of me in the room you would get that recording I don't edit the recording other than to you know uh, at the very beginning because I'm setting up so there's a bit of noise and stuff at the beginning so I take that out I ease the recording in, so I fade in, and then I fade out at the end. Any bits in the middle is only really if there's any loud sounds, big bangs, or anything like that. If at all possible, I try to edit that stuff out. But for the things that I say, I leave in. Maybe I should edit a bit of that out as well, but I don't, and that's the way it is. Which means it's real it's like a real it's almost like you're listening live this is not because uh, you know you can edit anything to sound completely different I could change the words around in this and make it sound very different to how it actually sounds in the moment and I have done that in the past on a couple of recordings when you know I've ended up doing an hour but there's lots of background music or not background sound and disturbances throughout the whole thing so I've gone back and ended up getting 
maybe 15 minutes worth of a recording out of the hour. But that was just so that I hadn't wasted an hour of my time. But then it probably took about another two hours to do the editing. So, it's like being live with me, like being in the room. This is what you would get. So, I'm not particularly slick, you know. He's like, hey, relax and calm yourself. I'm just me when I do this. You get a real person and... That's it. Yeah, that's it. I can't really offer more than what I am. I go along with the recording when I'm doing it. And I relax when I'm doing it as well. If I do a chronic pain session, I go along with the recording. You know, I do that stuff. I don't just talk it and then go away. I'm actually doing it. I'm living it while I'm doing it. So this is going to be a bit of a weirder session, perhaps, than some others you might have heard. And there will be probably two versions, one with, one without music. The longer version, two hour long, will be with music. And the music's by Kevin MacLeod. And the information of him will be in the description box of those particular podcast episodes. So... All I'm going to ask you to do, if you haven't already done it, is to close your eyes. I'd like you to get in touch with, get in touch with how you feel. Firstly, how do you feel emotionally? I mean, there could be a a, a level of Maybe annoyance that I have just got on with it. You know, why am I rabbiting on for 12 minutes about smelling a butcher's shop and stuff like that? You know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not well known for getting to the point sometimes. You may... Maybe you know, sense of anger or frustration or uh, sadness about something that's going on in your life. And we're not going to dwell on that. We're not going to focus on that. But at the same time, there's no need to ignore it either. Sometimes just by acknowledging that maybe you're not feeling the greatest Maybe you're feeling really good, you know. It's whatever the situation is, whatever the reality is in this moment. That's what we acknowledge. And we're not going to focus on it. We're just going to sort of say, okay, so I'm going to do that myself. How do I feel emotionally? Instead of just asking you to do it and expect you to be able to just automatically get in touch with your feelings I'm going to do it now and I'll tell you how I feel so this is an interactive recording in that sense I am feeling quite clear today and that makes more sense to me because I know how I've been feeling for the last two or three days which wasn't very good. So I'm feeling better, loads better than I did emotionally than I did at the weekend. So it's Monday now. I feel clearer. I feel... I feel quite calm. I can hear in the background the school kids in the playground. There's a school nearby. I'm mildly irritated by that. 
which I wouldn't be in any other situation, only when I'm doing a recording. The rest of the time, I, don't, I couldn't care. Um, if anything, it's quite nice in a way to hear kids enjoying themselves. You know, it's it's uh, it's kind of a beautiful thing, really, isn't it? You know, if you think back to, I think back to when I was at school, when I was, I don't know, seven, six, seven. It's all, almost, it doesn't matter. It's not that it doesn't matter, but when I was at school, when I was at that age, that's the only time at school that I actually enjoyed being at, to, at school, in junior school. Once I went to high school, hated it. But in junior school, everything, it was not really any pressure. You know, there was, there was, I wasn't a naughty child really, so I didn't get in trouble. I just plodded along, had fun at playground, did during the playtime, had lots of laughs, and didn't really, I managed to just f focus on that and forget other stuff. I didn't have a, I was too, ac too active, too busy at school to be focusing on stuff that was negative so it was quite a nice period of time in some ways at school so that's kind of how I, I know it's sort of a long long way of saying that I generally don't get too bothered by the screams of the kids but sometimes it does annoy me but mainly when I'm making a recording. So it's a little bit, but it's not a lot. That was way too expensive, so I'll try and stick to the point. Um, other than that, I'm feeling all right. I'm feeling, and when I say I'm feeling all right, I had almost like there was an injection in my spine, a painless one, by the way, of energy, pleasure. I can feel it. In my upper back, there's pleasure there. I don't know why. There's no reason for my upper back to feel pleasure. And there's no reason for there to be displeasure or pain. But it's pleasure for some reason. And it's now moving down my back to my lower back. Which is quite nice because... Oh, especially down my left, the left part of my back. So that's quite nice. Oh, I just noticed I was tense in my shoulders and then I just let them down. And my shoulders feel like they're just little. It's really weird. My shoulders feel like they're really like quite small. As if all the muscles are just almost melted. And it's just the bones. Because I'm not I'm not particularly bony. I do have bones. But I've got a little bit of uh, padding on me, as it were. I'm noticing my face as well. See, I know this has moved from how I feel emotionally, but I'm noticing that in my face, there's, I don't know, it's a weird way, I can only describe it as almost sunshine, a sunshiny feeling, uh, you know, on a nice day, nice bright day, even if it's in the winter, we have beautiful bright days sometimes, you know, and it's uplifting. It can be uplifting. And there's, there's that kind of feeling, really, in my face. And the coolness of my breath. And something I always find a bit strange is my mouth and my jaw is feeling more relaxed. 
the reason it surprises me is I'm talking. I'm using those muscles. I'm using my jaw. Yet it feels really quite relaxed. And I think I have quite a, quite a, a tight jaw at times. Quite a strong, strong jaw, not not as in like um, broody and handsome strong jaw, but just a bit of sometimes a little bit too tight. And right now it feels very relaxed. My throat feels relaxed, but that's a part of me that feels relaxed quite a lot of the time. But maybe that's through practice. Because it's to to make recordings, I can't be talking like this. You know, I can't. My voice needs to be relaxed in order to make recordings. So, still my voice, still how I talk. And of course, you know the the volume may go down and the. You know, the speech may slow down, but it's still me. So there's a relaxed, I guess there's always that part of me that's fairly relaxed. I can feel my head now and I have my scalp and I can almost feel my brain. Now... In reality, none of us can feel our brain because there's no nerve endings in our brain. But I do feel a sense of relaxation in my scalp right near the back of my head. And now in my eyes. hands as well are getting a little bit yeah, nice and relaxed hmm. so that feels quite nice so I'd like you to get in contact with how you physically feel as well. If you haven't, um, if you haven't yet got in contact with how you emotionally feel, maybe do that first. And it's not about spending a long time doing this with the with the emotional feelings, just noticing, and they may have already changed since I started this recording since I started talking about my own emotions you may have you may feel different and physically you may feel a little bit different you may notice parts of your body which now feel more relaxed than it did before. And you know what? Although it goes against goes against the rules, it is okay to notice parts of your body that don't feel relaxed. You know, this is about reality. This is about how you really feel. It's not about pretending. It's just, you know, it's okay to acknowledge those parts. So, for example, my legs don't feel particularly relaxed. My right calf muscle, I actually injured it a few days ago. It's a lot better now, but it's still doesn't feel relaxed 
at all. It feels tense, which is okay. By acknowledging it, I give it the attention, at least some attention that it needs. I'm probably not giving it all the attention it needs because you know, I could spend an hour focusing just on my right calf muscle. And that would reduce whether it was cramp, that would reduce the cramp. If it was chronic pain, if it whatever the reason for that discomfort, the right calf muscle would the feelings would change quite a lot in that hour if that was what I was focusing on. But this isn't a session for that. This is an overall relaxation. I mean, in some ways, it's more about a mind relaxation than body relaxation. Even though the more relaxed your mind feels, the more relaxed your body feels because it can always get to the point as well that your body seems to just disappear. So that right calf muscle of mine will no longer be a problem because it almost won't exist. Which means my whole body will feel completely relaxed. Because when your mind is relaxed, your body becomes relaxed. And the more your body becomes relaxed, you guessed it the more your mind feels relaxed. So, I'm going to ask you, just imagine there's a doorway in front of you. And just remember, everything that we do in these recordings are safe okay everything is safe so this is a safe space and everything we do in this safe space is going to be safe so even though there's a doorway and you don't know what's behind that door it's a safe space it's a safe door okay and also, you know, you don't have to do anything that I say. You can go along with what I, what I say. And it's only going to be healthy, relaxing, sleepy stuff. It's not going to be anything too weird. But remember, you can open your eyes at any time during the relaxation stage. Once you're asleep, of course, that might be a little bit different because you'll be asleep. And the more relaxed you feel, the more relaxed your eyes feel and your eyelids, they're going to feel heavy. Not because I've said that they're going to feel heavy, it's just they do naturally. And you probably won't want to open them. But it's still your choice. So you've got that door in front of you. And inside that door is a relaxing room. So when you step through that door and the door closes behind you, you will automatically feel more relaxed, okay? But not by much. It's gonna vary depending on what you allow, really, I guess. 
but it will be more relaxed. But the idea is buy only a small amount. And you may think, well, why only a small amount? Ah, <laughs> there's a reason. Okay, so only a small amount. So we're talking maybe it's just going to be noticeable. Only just. Almost is when you go through one door and you go outside and the temperature's different. But, but maybe just by a little bit, but you notice it. You know, you go walk outside like, oh, it's a bit warmer or it's a bit fresher. There's a little breeze. It's a, a slight difference. And that's what you're going to feel when you walk through this door. So I'd like you to walk through the door now in your mind. Open that door up. Walk through and the door automatically closes. You haven't got to touch the door door automatically closes and you're in a room that also has a door in ahead of you another door and you can feel that slight change in relaxation you feel slightly more relaxed only a little bit And when you look behind you, you see the door's gone. The other door that you walked into with is gone. So there's there's no way back to feeling how you did before. There's no way out other than forward into the next room. Of course, you can open your eyes at any time, so you know you're not trapped. You're not trapped in feeling good and feeling relaxed. So the next room is like very much like this room, but slightly more relaxed, okay? So there's no way out of this room other than forward into the next room, which is more relaxed. So what I'd like you to do is just walk forward in your mind open that door walk through and that door will close automatically behind you and disappear so the door will be gone and there'll be a door ahead of you for the next room so now notice how you feel in this new room notice what level of relaxation you're at now you know just it might be a tiny tiny increase of relaxation maybe a lot that's going to really be down to what your natural reaction is what your feelings are and also you can actually choose what level it goes to I recommend just doing it slightly but you may choose to do it more you may choose to feel more relaxed than you already are even though you're going to feel more relaxed when you walk through the next door so time to walk through the next door and again there will be a slight increase in your sense of relaxation maybe 5% enough to notice but not enough to write a poem about you know <laughs> just you know you don't have to get excited about it but it can feel nice so when you're ready step through that door again the door closes behind you and disappears. So you can't go backwards into the previous feeling. You're kind of a little, you know, you're in the new feeling of 
feeling more relaxed with that door ahead of you to the next room. You can just breathe in the air. Notice that this is there's definitely a, a more of a sense of relaxation in the actual oxygen of the room. There's uh, a calmness in this room that wasn't in the previous one. And you can just absorb that feeling and enjoy it. But knowing that the next room you walk into will be more relaxing than this one. It may only be very, very slightly more relaxing. It may be considerably more relaxing. I'm not sure yet. Either way, when you step into that room, the door will close behind you and you won't be able to go back you won't be able to come back to this feeling. The only feeling you'll have is the increased relaxation in your body, in your mind. With that door ahead of you, which goes into the next room, which is even more relaxing. So get ready to go forward, go through that door. That's right, and allow that door to close behind you naturally and disappear. And you've got that other door ahead of you into the next room. But right now, let's focus on how you feel in this room. Has the sense of comfort and looseness is it increased a little bit? Or is it increased a lot? Just notice how your mind feels and how your body feels. Maybe you feel like your body and the muscles in your body are just melting away. And that your mind is almost empty of any thoughts clear like water and just absorb that feeling in your body and your mind as you step forward into the next room which will be more relaxing and step forward now through that door as that door closes behind you and disappears and of course you've got the door ahead of you into the next relaxing room and just notice how you feel now and maybe there's a sensation that you're experiencing that you weren't experiencing before and you're surprised about that. You're surprised at how something as simple as just going into different rooms in your mind, each room more relaxing and calming than the next, than the last rather, and you just notice that there's something changing. Something changing. In a positive way. And you may find that you're feeling, you know, a little bit drowsy and tired and 
there comes a time during a relaxation where your mind may start to drift a little bit and even though you can hear my words your mind starts to possibly feel that you just want to fall asleep and just drift away as we now look at the door ahead of us we're going to step into that door through that door into that room and this relaxation room also has another element of sleep in there as well so when you're ready I'd like you to step through that door now when that door automatically closes behind you, disappears, there's a door ahead of you into the next room. And as you breathe in the air of this room, this new, even more relaxed room, with that sense of sleepiness, the comfort of just letting go and drifting letting go and drifting feels really good feels calm feels nice and when you're ready you can now walk through the next door into the more relaxing sleepier room as you step through that room that door into that room now the door naturally closes behind you disappears and seals and you've got that door ahead of you into the more sleepy relaxing room now you may find that things are starting to slow down starting to really feel almost slow motion and you can you can feel that you know that you're there but at the same time not really feel that you're there at all not there at all as your mind drifts to the deeper, sleepier, relaxed space of that room, walk 
in through the door, the door closes behind you and disappears and you've got that door ahead of you into the next relaxing sleepy room. And you don't really, you don't want to do anything. You don't feel the need to think about anything. You're just in that room. You're just there. just there. And as you see the door ahead of you, I'd like you now to move into that room. And I realize that may take some time because you're moving so slowly as you move through the door of that room the door closes behind you and disappears and there's another door ahead of you which leads to sleep and relaxation. As you enjoy the feeling to stay in this room for a while or if you want to you can move through the door into sleep choice is yours and you can enjoy feeling relaxed and sleep